Good evening and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French. We're going to spend the entire hour talking, of course, about impeachment. As we've told you, Democrats, they've opened an impeachment inquiry into the president of the United States. And we are starting to learn more and more about how it will proceed. And certainly we've learned more troubling information today. The acting director of national intelligence, Joseph McGuire, he was grilled by the House Intel Committee about his handling of the whistleblower complaint regarding the president and Ukraine. In a minute, we will play extended sound from that hearing. But before McGuire was even sworn in, that complaint, it was released to the public. And if possible, is even more damning than many of us expected. It says, the president received information from multiple officials, I should say, the whistleblower received information from multiple officials saying that the president was using his power to solicit interference from a foreign country in the 2020 election. It went on to say the White House tried to, quote unquote, lock down his words, the records of that call, by moving transcripts into a secure system meant for classified information because the people privy to the call were so troubled by its contents. Plus, we are learning new details about the whistleblower himself. Of course, he is remaining anonymous, but the Times saying he's a CIA analyst who worked at the White House before returning to the agency. We are also going to spend the balance of the program looking at this story from many different angles, political, security, intelligence, and much more. But first, I wanted to tell you about some of the questions that we are going to attempt to answer this evening that I think I've heard from a lot of you in casual conversations. First and foremost, why is this such a big deal? We'll attempt to show you why. Also, how did we get to this point? Plus, was the whistleblower complaint handled the way that it was supposed to be? And lastly, where do we go from here? This hour, we will answer those questions. But we're going to kick things off first with the hearing and House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff's opening statement. Yesterday, we were presented with a record of a call between the President of the United States and the President of Ukraine in which the President, our President, sacrificed our national security and our Constitution for his personal political benefit. Well, it reads like a classic organized crime shakedown. Shorn of its rambling character and in not so many words, this is the essence of what the President communicates. We've been very good to your country, very good. No other country has done as much as we have. But you know what? I don't see much reciprocity here. I hear what you want. I have a favor I want from you, though. And I'm going to say this only seven times, so you better listen good. I want you to make up dirt on my political opponent, understand lots of it. On this and on that, I'm going to put you in touch with people, and not just any people. I'm going to put you in touch with Attorney General of the United States, my Attorney General, Bill Barr. He's got the whole weight of the American law enforcement behind him. And I'm going to put you in touch with Rudy. You're going to love him, trust me. You know what I'm asking, and so I'm only going to say this a few more times, in a few more ways. And by the way, don't call me again. I'll call you when you've done what I asked. Then ranking Republican Devin Nunes got his turn. This operation began with media reports from the prime instigators of the Russia collusion hoax that a whistleblower is claiming President Trump made nefarious promise to a foreign leader. The released transcript of that call has already debunked that central assertion. But that didn't matter. The Democrats simply moved the goalposts and began claiming that there doesn't need to be a quid pro quo for this conversation to serve as the basis for impeaching the president. Speaker Pelosi went further when asked earlier if she would put brakes on impeachment if the transcript turned out to be benign. She responded, quote, we have many candidates for impeachable offenses. That was her quote. So there you go. If the whistleblower operation doesn't work out, the Democrats and their media assets can always drum up something else. 
Now, I should tell you that anyone's reading, and if you haven't already, please do read the whistleblower's complaint. Uh, no one believes that it is, in fact, benign. And, in fact, no Republican on the stand defended the president's actions. The disagreement, of course, was did this rise to an impeachable offense? Well, there are still many more questions than answers. Now, Democrats today spent a lot of time trying to pin McGuire down on his contact with the president. I want to play this exchange because it's pretty typical of the way that the hearing went. I think you left the door open that you spoke to the President of the United States about this whistleblower complaint. Sir, did you speak personally to the President of the United States at any time about this complaint? Congressman, once again, I am the President's intelligence officer. I speak to the President. I, I cannot say one Mr. way— Mr. Director, I know you speak to the President a lot. It's a simple question, sir. Did you speak to him about this whistleblower complaint, yes or no? Congressman Maloney, my conversation with the President of the United States is privileged. Did you discuss this subject, this whistleblower plane, with the President? You can say, I did not discuss it with him, if that's the answer. That doesn't betray any privilege. And you can say, I did discuss it with him, but I'm not going to get into the content of those conversations. That question you can answer. Chairman Schiff, once again, you know, my conversation, no matter what the subject is, with the President of the United States, is privileged conversation between the Director of National Intelligence and the president. So really what a lot of the Q&A was going is when this was when this whistleblower brought the complaint and went through the proper channels and went through obviously in the intelligence apparatus the inspector general and the inspector general also validated this complaint as both serious and urgent why then did the DNI not go to Congress but instead go to the Justice Department and more specifically to the White House counsel to get advice on that. That's where a lot of the questions were. And what they never got the answer was, did he personally talk to the president about a complaint of which the president was obviously the subject in question? I want to play this next clip. And this exchange is between McGuire and Congressman Jackie Spire of California. This also getting a lot of attention, and I think you'll see why when you see it. When you read the complaint, were you shocked? at all by what you read? Congressman, Congresswoman, excuse me. Um, as I said, I had a, life experience, a lot of life experience. I joined the Navy. I, I understand your record. Could you just well, what answer I mean is, it? I, I, realized the, I realized full well, full and well, the importance of the allegation. And I also have to tell you, Congressman, Congresswoman, when I saw that, I anticipated having to sit in front of some committee sometime to discuss it. The point was, Seemingly everyone involved in the loop, maybe with the exception of the president and maybe Rudy Giuliani, nobody thought when this conversation and what either preceded or even followed it between the president and the Ukrainian um, counterpart, nobody thought that what the president was asking was insignificant. And moreover, there was attempts, as we learned, or at least is, are alleged by the whistleblower, to even conceal this conversation because of the explosive nature of it. Okay. I want to play another clip. This from Congressman Andre Carson of Indiana. He asked the following. Director McGuire, this appears uh, to be the first intelligence community whistleblower complaint that has ever, ever uh, been withheld from Congress. Is that right, sir? Uh, uh, Congressman Carson, I, I believe that uh, it, it might be. And once again, I said in my statement, it is, in fact, as far as I'm concerned, unprecedented. Unprecedented, and I think that's a good way to describe the situation we find ourselves in now. All right, finally, um, I'm going to wrap up what? Not with another congressman's question or, or the answer from the DNI, but instead from the president himself. Listen to what the president's reaction to of all of the last 48 hours of developments is. I just watched a little bit of this on television. It's a disgrace to our country. It's another witch hunt. Here we go again. It's uh, Adam Schiff and his crew making up stories and sitting there like pious, whatever you want to call them. It's just a really a, a disgrace. It's a terrible thing for our country. I think uh, we can agree on the terrible thing for our country, the situation we now find ourselves in. And a little bit of a tease. Later on um, in this program, in, in a few minutes, in fact, I'm going to play a clip that the president said at a private meeting today for how we views the contents of what the whistleblower said and the chilling threats 
that you don't have to read between the lines as to where he believes anyone cooperating this, what they deserve. Again, that coming up. But when we return on the other side of the break, ABC News political director Rick Klein, he'll join me with an inside look at how impeachment is playing out on Capitol Hill.